special. Not yet. Not yet. No, 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 no. It's the power of So I thought if you just pressed it before, it would automatically start to play the prison. So that should be it. Well, once it's ready to go, I'll press that. Yeah.
Good morning, folks. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Mike and I are on sound live streaming this morning, so just wave at me if at any point I, I disappear off the microphone. Um, it's lovely to be back with you after a couple of weeks on holiday, and thank you so much, all of you who are here today, for coming in what is a really particularly miserable morning. Um, I suspect that it feels so miserable because we've had such a good summer. But it's great to be back and um, I'm flying solo this morning because there are so many intimations that rather than ask Bill to come up and read you a lengthy list at the beginning, I'm going to split it up through the service. So, um, just very briefly to begin with, there are a very small number of magazines left in the large hall. If you do collect magazines and you haven't picked up yours, they're there ready for you. Um, and this afternoon in the large hall, again, from three till four, there will be making music. If you have ever played an instrument but feel a little bit rusty, if you would like to learn a new instrument, um, then please come along. Um, it's entirely free. It's entirely fun. Um, there's no expectation of experience or ability, and it's for all ages. We have instruments here, um, and we invite you to come from three till four this afternoon, and it's going to be on our alternate Sundays. The only other thing I, was, I would like to share with you at the beginning of the service is the result of yesterday's presbytery meeting. You will remember that for the last two Sundays, Audrey has intimated that um, uh, a representation of the West Kirk was cited to attend St Andrews in the town yesterday, where the whole of uh, Presbytery gathered to discuss, amend and vote on the draft Angus Presbytery Mission Plan. There we go, I've got it out. Um, uh, those of you who came to the <coughs> meeting that we had at the start of July who were interested, um, we shared the plan for the Arbroath cluster with you at that. But this was for the whole of Angus, which is divided into six clusters. Um, it is something that we have been required to do as a result of legislation passed at the General Assembly of 2021. And it doesn't just apply to Angus, it applies to presbyteries throughout Scotland. You have maybe seen many things in the press about it in the last few weeks. Three and a half hours of debate, um, of representations and feelings that were quite validly expressed and shared. At the end of the meeting, we voted to accept the draft plan with very one, well, with two very small amendments that don't affect the R growth cluster. What happens now is that the plan will be slightly tidied up and then it will be sent to Edinburgh and the group there will have a look at it and they will come back to us by the end of this month. So we're not there yet. There may be amendments that we will be required to make. But the first major stage of the process, I suppose, is complete. More later. <coughs> welcome if you are listening to the radio this afternoon. Welcome if you are watching the live stream. Um, September is traditionally in the Church of Scotland calendar <coughs> the month of stewardship. Appropriately, it's also the month at the end of this month when we give thanks and celebrate harvest. Each year, we're asked to reflect alternately on talents, on time, or on money. And this year, we're going to be considering our gifts, our talents, those that are natural and innate within us, and those that we have developed or uh, cultivated over the years, and how we offer them to God in his service. So, as we begin our worship this morning, let's just stop for a moment. And in our stillness, 
give praise to God. To God who looked at having made the new creation and said, it is very good. Let's worship God. And we sing our first hymn, which will be on the screen. Um, it's number 169, if you've got a purple hymn book. Praise the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. I'm doing now. <laughs> Having praised the Lord for all that we see, hear, feel and touch around us, let's now come before him in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God who looked at your creation and called it good, we gather here today as your people, blessed by your gifts blessed by love that we have been made in your image, blessed that we are placed in this earthly display of your handiwork. Generous God, you have lavished every gift upon us. We bring our thanks for the loveliness and the ingenuity of your creation. We see your thoughtfulness in the turning seasons in the endless variety of nature and in the astonishing creativity of humankind. In your amazing generosity, you didn't even spare your own son in your search for those who had wandered away. In recognition of all these gifts and in gratitude for the blessings you show us, great and small, we bring you our offerings, our offerings of money and of the promise of service yet to be given. And we offer it to you to use for your purposes, for this church family, for this community, and for the world abroad. Today, as we take time to think back over the past week, and perhaps further back than that, we realise that we're not always grateful for what we have received. 
Sometimes we misuse the earth's plenty and consume more than we need, taking from future generations resources which are rightly theirs. We don't always use the gifts and the opportunities that you present to us, sometimes preferring to play it safe, worrying what others might say or think, doubting that our words or actions can make a difference. And in these ways, we don't always show your face to the world. So loving God, forgive us. Remake from wounded souls signs of your grace that in the days which lie ahead we may, unburdened by the past, serve the cause of your kingdom. For we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we say together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Girls, would you like to come out and join me? I am coming. There we are. Okay, so... Um, I haven't seen you since you went back to school because I've been on holiday and Charlie you're looking rather different <laughs> you've had your hair cut yeah, yeah. it's lovely I did it for charity you did it for charity yeah. and which charity um, Love Interest Trust very good well it suits you I suspect you've all grown as well yes I'm 11 years old you're 11 years old. Yes, That's nothing to do with your height, but anyway. <laughs> well, I'm five foot four. Yeah. <laughs> Come round, girls, because you're, she's hiding. How is school? Good, yeah? You're happy to be in P7? P6? P7? No. You're not? The first day back at, at P7 at school, and the other day, it's like the back. Bash my leg off the metal pub table. Oh, right, okay. Well, when we were on holiday, I bashed my ankle um, on a paddleboard or falling off the paddleboard, <laughs> shall we say, and it's still bruised. So I, I feel your pain. I got massive bruises. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel your pain. Right, well, because you're now back at school and because I've been on holiday, and because I thought I would be very kind to you, I've bought you all a gift today. Oh. 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 oh, yes. Now, now, now then. Let's see. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Olivia? Lily? Charlie. Right, you can open them. Um, for those of you who are listening on the radio, they've got small bags with small gifts in, wrapped up in tissue paper, um, and I'll let you know in a moment, as I will everybody else, what they're getting. Right, okay, Olivia, well, would you like to start then? Would you like to tell everybody what you've got? Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Olivia has got odor eaters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, shoe spray for smelly feet. <laughs> Why do you think I've given Olivia that? <laughs> it's not because I know that you've got smelly feet, Olivia. It's because I know that Olivia goes football training. And so... Over the next few weeks and months, 
she'll be wearing her trainers or her football boots on the pitches in all sorts of weather, if today is anything to go by, Olivia. And, and they, oh, she does indoor football as well. Yes. Oh, well, I, well, I'm trying to be kind to you and say that you've not got smelly feet, but that your feet might be, your, your boots might be messy but because of the outside weather. And so I bought her odour eaters. Right, Lily, what have you got? Lily's got shampoo, but it's a specific kind of shampoo. It's a hydrating shampoo. I looked online last night and it told me that if you do a lot of swimming, you have to have a shampoo that will specifically rehydrate your hair because the chlorine and the other chemicals in the swimming pools make it dry. And so I've given Lily some shampoo. That's she's probably I, never used it before, but that, anyway, there we are. That's why you always go in, that's why you always take a um, shower on the mess, it's exciting. Right, okay, Charlie. And what have you got? Harry Potter, now take it. Harry Potter, she's got, <laughs> <laughs> she's got pencils and pens, etc., cetera, um, which are a Harry Potter set, because I know that Charlie is Harry Potter mad. Now, girls, I'm very sorry that I gave you odour eaters and shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually have oh, thank you. a Harry Potter pencil case and a Harry Potter journal. <laughs> <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is that I know little bits about Charlie, Olivia and Lily. I know that Lily does a lot of swimming. I know that Olivia not only plays football, but goes to watch our broth for her, yes. unfortunately, this season so far. It's and terrible, they have too long. Well, <laughs> sounds like she wants to be the manager too. <laughs> and I know that Charlie likes Harry Potter. Um, but I don't know everything there is to know about each one of these girls, and I don't know everything there is to know about anybody in this room. But the Bible tells us that God made us all in his own image and that he cares for us so much that he knows every single little thing about us, even down to the hairs on our head. And you've all got a lot more hairs on your head than I have. But he loves us that much and he knows us. And this month, we're going to think about the gifts, the natural gifts that he gives to us and how and if we share them with others for others benefit and also um, to serve him so there you go that's your gifts for today now we're going to sing a song which is in junior praise which isn't a new song we have sung it once before but i, I suspect you don't know it very well and it, again it's thanking god about the unique gifts that he gives to each one of us. So we're going to sing, If I Were a Butterfly. Can you manage? I'm sorry, but I don't know how you managed to get this in there. Okay. <laughs> Let's stand to sing.
month, uh, well, not in the last month, at our last worship group meeting. We were thinking ahead and planning worship up to the end of this month. And we agreed um, that as our stewardship season, this season was the gift of talents, that one of the ways in which we would highlight that in services was by asking different folk in the church who offer their own gifts, maybe hidden, maybe not, in service, not just of the church, but of the wider community, we would ask them to share a little bit about that with us, about their background, about their stories, and whether um, they are happy to use their gifts or feel a little bit reticent about sharing them. And so this morning, I'm going to ask Vicky to join me. <laughs> I'm such a teacher, I've prepared. <laughs> Okay, so I did give Vicky some these questions, which is why I put my glasses on earlier in the week, so I better not skip from them if you've prepared them. Okay, so many of you may know the answers to some of these questions more than I do, um, because you've known Vicky for longer than I, but bear with me. So, Vicky, I know that you've been learning instruments and singing since you were a child, but when did you realise that singing and playing the piano and the other things wasn't just something that you did as an activity, as a child, as a teenager, um, but something that you would be able to develop and use as part of your career. I don't think there was a specific time when I realised. I grew up in a really musical family. My dad played the accordion in country, uh, Scottish Country Blend, which some of you might remember. Um, when I was a little uh, girl, I used to crawl across the floor and start playing the keys on his accordion. My mum used to play the piano and sing. So everything was musical in our family from, from such a young age. And then I went to Kitty McLaughlin, who obviously realised my talents of singing and sent me to Sheena. So I suppose I never realised. It was people behind me that realised for me. Um, the truth is that I never really practised. I could just pick up an instrument and play it. And I got through a lot. Um, it wasn't until recently Sheena said, you never practised, did you? And I said no. No, and she told me that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it was a gift, absolutely, that I was given. Um, and not one that I had to work on so much until recently. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, and this is just a personal question that I've asked, it doesn't particularly, but I, if you are performing, do you prefer to perform solo or do you prefer to be as part of a, a group, an ensemble, a choir, whatever? I don't have a preference. Oh, right. I love singing, um, I love playing, uh, I love the sound which a choir would make together when everyone's in tune. Um, <laughs> but I also, <laughs> I also loved uh, more, not so much recently because I don't have the time to, but I used to love performing on my own um, in Glasgow, in, in our both, just, yeah. But I don't have the time anymore. It's more helping others reach their goals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because, well, I, I'm sure you're probably aware of the many things that Vicky does, but there are other things that she does that I, you know, I mean, when we were doing the holiday club a few weeks ago, she said, oh, well, I'm busy this afternoon. I've got to go over to Dundee because I'm helping a choir over there. There are obviously lots of one-off things that, uh, that come up as well. So my next question. So time went on. You, you know, you come from this musical family. Uh, it's in the blood and it's obviously a, a regular and a, um, a natural part of household life and you went and studied and what have you but now Monday to Friday you're teaching music at school here at the West Kirk you're um, uh, helping the choir and leading the choir and playing for us in services on alternate months and then on top of that you still have the enthusiasm to lead in harmony on Tuesday evenings um, and this afternoon, you're going to be doing making music here, uh, teaching and encouraging others. Doesn't it all get a bit much? Yes. <laughs> it must do. It must um, do. Yeah. I suppose I, I realised that more so in COVID, when everyone was uh, locked up. 
and you couldn't get out and you, you didn't have to be somewhere for a certain time. I actually quite enjoyed that. Um, I don't think I've ever been able to spend a whole week at home with the family without having to go out in the car and, and not being able to see Lily go to bed or, you know, so COVID for me was actually quite a nice relaxing time, um, which I think probably a lot of you have been able to evaluate your lives as well during that time. Um, it didn't stop me after everything started up again though. Um, I think the issue is that you can't say, if, if you're not 100% on a night, you can't say you're not going to do something because you've got 30, 40 people waiting on you. So it can be a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Do you feel that God has given you these gifts to use? Um, because, let's face it folks, it's not just the ability that Vicky has to sing or to play an instrument. but she's also using it nine to five she has the ability to teach others and encourage others to do the same to build up their confidence so that they are willing to sing as part of a choir and perhaps sing a verse of a song that everybody's doing on their own it's not just about the ability to play the music it's about the ability to convey that as well do you believe that that's something that you were, put, you were brought up in a musical family, but do you see it as part of your service to God in response to his gifting to you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was thinking about this last night, it, it's not just about, like you say, the, the soloists and the choirs that you're changing the lives of. It's actually um, the doctors and the, the people who are going into medicine that, that actually need music to be able to get into the courses now in university. And I don't think people understand that you know law degrees and um, dentistry and doctors they can't become what they are career-wise without music as a, a subject in an A so yeah so now so now we're getting um, kids coming into the music department in their last year at school miss can you get me an A in a year and I'm going well you've actually only got six months because the music exam is in six months time so so yeah it is a lot um, and I don't think a lot of people realise it's not just about the singing and, and the playing and the enjoyment of music instruments. It's actually needed for a lot more now. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I would like to say to, to Vicky, hopefully on your behalf, but certainly personally, um, you're giving service to people in that they're learning their instruments and enjoying singing in choirs and playing music. Um, you're also helping students who want to do other things to get onto their courses because music is a prerequisite. But in the concerts um, that you produce, in the music that you play, um, the melody and the combination of the melody and the words gives a lot of pleasure to so many people. And in that, you are serving God. Sorry. <laughs> I very rarely get emotional, I'm sorry, but music is something that moves people. Yeah. And in that, you are serving God. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll calm down now. <laughs> Isabel, um, would you like to come and share with us our Bible readings for today? <clears throat> the first reading is from Psalm 139, and it's on page 622. And it's reading from verse 1 to 14. Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do. From far away you understand all my thoughts. You see me whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. 
If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the furthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me or the light around me to turn into night, but even darkness is not dark for you, and the dark is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. And the second reading is Luke chapter 12, and it's on page 94. And we're reading from verse 4 to 7. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot afterwards do anything worse. I will show you whom to fear. Fear God, who after killing has the authority to throw into hell. Believe me, he is the one you must fear. Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one sparrow is forgotten by God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. So do not be afraid. You're worth much more than many sparrows. Amen. Thanks be to God for his reading from his holy word. And thank you, Isabel, for sharing it with us. Now, our next hymn is number 641 in the purple hymn books. Words are on the screen. We're going to sing, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Now, I understand that you're used to singing this in parts. (laughs) So the choir tell me. So, the lectern side of church, if you sing the verses, so you just keep singing the verses, okay? And the pulpit side of church, if you sing the alleluias, So we will all sing the first verse. No, no. 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 See, I don't listen. So the pulpit do the. um, We all sing. So everybody sings verse one. Yes. And then they would repeat verse one while they do the chorus. Yes. 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 That is what I was going to say. Right. Everybody sings verse one, and then the lectern side of church repeats verse one. And the pulpit side of church sings the Alleluias. Okay, choir? <laughs> Let's stand to sing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
Let's pray. Loving God, we are in your presence this morning and we seek your kingdom. We seek your presence with us as we reflect on your word, that through your Holy Spirit, we would know you more, even as we are known by you. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Yes, you can have that on the screen, Billy. It's okay. No, it's all right. There you go. This is a picture of Lucy, um, our second granddaughter, who was 13 weeks old yesterday. Um, and whenever we see Lucy, it's a bit of a learning curve for Mike and I, because not least because she's unique and because at this stage and age, she's always changing, and she's beginning now to show the traits of her personality. But also because Lucy's our second granddaughter, and when Gabby um, was born, we went into lockdown three weeks later, and so we didn't see these stages with Gabby. So, and it's a long time since our girls were born, so uh, it's all new and it's unfamiliar territory. But when a, babe, a new baby comes into any of our lives as a member of the family or a neighbour or the, the, the child of a friend, um, then, or perhaps when a child comes here, as Esme did a month or so ago for her christening, then we marvel, don't we, at the uniqueness and the incredible event that is the birth of new life and the potential and the opportunity that we see in that small face and that small body. And it's a reminder of what Isabel read for us in the psalm from 139 this morning, that we are all unique and fearfully and wonderfully made. Or perhaps we could look at it slightly differently. And if you're out and about in the outskirts of our growth at the moment and you see the bales stacked high in the cut fields, then you can also now see the potatoes with the tops cut off before they start harvesting them too. That as well is a reminder, as is the birth of a new child, of the amazing generosity of God's provision. A God who created this world and provided for his people so that we could um, live in his image and in relationship with him. A God who, when in ancient times the people failed him and didn't manage to follow being in relationship with him, who then sent his son to live and to die among them. To redeem them. A God who, having done that, then offered his people, and that's us, many, many, many years down the line, the gift of the Holy Spirit, who would continue to guide and sustain them. But being known by God, recognising that he is the creator and that we're all unique and fearfully, wonderfully made is one thing, but being known by him is quite another. Okay, we can go on to the next one, Billy. I don't know if you are, um, if you have a, a knowledge of superheroes, but think about Superman. <coughs> Superman from DC Comics, who has superhuman abilities, adopted by farming parents as a child when his own parents had sent him from another planet which was decombusting. He finds that he has special powers and he uses them to fight crime. But he does so donning the costume that you can see on the slide because he wants to uh, shield his powers and what the results of, of those powers from his private life. 
And then there's also Spider-Man. Spider-Man, who's not DC Comics, but Marvel Comics. And he's perhaps an even more complex superhero. Again, his alias, Peter Parker, is an orphan. And in his life, he goes through an awful lot of, in, the, in his life, not as Spider-Man, but as Peter Parker, an awful lot of anxieties um, and insecurities. Mm. And yet, when he dons the costume uh, with the, the powers that he has gained having been bitten from a spider, he's able to do remarkable things. Now, I show you these two superheroes who, who hide themselves, if you like, in a costume. Because though we can acknowledge the wonder of birth and the potential and possibilities of babies and of nature, as adults, we find it a lot easier to do what maybe Superman and Spider-Man do and hide some of our gifts. We find it hard to do what Vicky did today and to acknowledge the gifts that are given to us and that if we develop them, they can be used to serve and to bless so many other people. And why is that? Well, I think um, uh, we are traditionally reticent in adulthood about acknowledging what we're good at because it's thought of as being a little bit boastful and being a bit full of ourselves. Um, and also, perhaps, we're fearful of saying what we're good at because we're concerned that somebody else is going to ask us to volunteer for something <coughs> and use those gifts. And believe me, when you tell people that you're an accountant and you've got financial training, that happens a lot. <laughs> <coughs> Psychologists and psychiatrists tell us that many will go to great lengths to hide their true selves from others for all sorts of reasons. <coughs> but mainly because if they expose themselves, then they feel a vulnerability. Now, in Luke's Gospel, Jesus is speaking to the disciples as they travel to Jerusalem for what will be Jesus' last visit there. And so there's increasing tension and threat and plots in the air, and hence perhaps the tone of Jesus' words in these few small verses. But in them, Jesus reaffirms what we know from Psalm 139, what we know from Genesis, right through the whole of the Old Testament. That whatever the threat or the embarrassment or the insecurity of the world and those who live in it can be, God knows and cares for each one of us, down to the hairs, as I said to the girls, down to the hairs on our head. And we need not fear exposing any of our reticence or our anxiety or our vulnerability about the gifts that we have before him, because he is faithful and he protects us. And much more than that, God wants us to develop our gifts and abilities because in so doing, we become, we live our best life, if you like. We become the people that we were called to be. So this month, as we reflect on God's provision to us, on our own gifts and abilities, and how we offer them in his service, be kind to yourselves. Be honest with yourselves and acknowledge God's gift to you. Amen. And our next hymn reflects on that. We're going to sing number 501, I think it is, although I've written the wrong number on my sheet. I think it's number 501 in the books. <coughs> Take this moment, time and space.
come now to the time in our worship when we offer our prayers. Our prayers for ourselves, for others, and for the wider world around. Let us pray together. Spirit of God, your love is all around us. Wherever we turn, we are overwhelmed by your bounty. How can we thank you for your gifts to us? For your goodness never ends. We have not earned it and we cannot repay it. It flows over and around us and never leaves us, though sometimes we fail to recognize its presence. We live surrounded by your love just as a fish lives in the sea. As we reflect in this stewardship season on what you have given each one of us personally and collectively, give us the assurance and the inspiration to understand more of how we can use what you give in your service, confident that you love and value us and walk with us all the way. And as we do so, we pray for the world in all its glory and its need. And today we are challenged at every turn as new discoveries produce more disaster and raise fresh questions. As we reflect on the terrible situation millions find themselves in Pakistan as a result of natural disaster. As we reflect on the unenviable situation some families in the UK find themselves in as their children are killed or attacked on the streets. As we reflect on the loss of life and the separation of families resulting from the previous Afghan conflict and the ongoing Ukraine war. We ask, as Solomon did, for the wisdom to know right from wrong, so that there may be justice for every child of God. We ask for this for ourselves, for our leaders, and especially this week for our new Prime Minister as they are appointed and seek to begin and to consider these and the many other pressing issues that face this country at this present time. May we be restless in the search for peace, peace in our circles of family and friendship, peace in our land, and peace between the nations. <coughs> and following the presbytery <coughs> meeting yesterday morning, loving God, we pray for our church, our church here in our growth, in Angus and across Scotland. Call us again afresh to follow you, that we may stride out to be by your side. Fill us with the grace which seeks the best, the faith which persists in the search, and the spirit which equips us for the challenge of each day. Eternal God, in other times you called men and women to give of their best, to develop their talents and to be the best that they could be. And we give thanks for the ways in which so many have personally inspired us to follow in that way. And so today we pray for those who have gone before, those we remember who have died. And we pray too for those who are known to us who are sick, who are perhaps waiting for hospital appointments or for treatment, and for those who care for them. And we remember those today who mourn the loss of someone dear. And in the silence we lay before you all those who lie on our hearts. Healing God, we pray that you would bring them your peace, that you would place in their path those who can care, those who can support, those who can give them a sense of your Holy Spirit with them. 
And as we draw our prayers today to a close, we ask that you would keep each one of us true in our service of you until we join with all the saints in that place of unending praise. We ask these prayers through the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for the rest of the intimations. Okay, so, um, where's my sheet of paper? Here we go. I'll try not to forget anything. So as um, in July and August, the church was open on a Thursday evening between six and seven, just for quiet prayer and reflection. Now that Youth Club has started back and starts at six, the church is still going to be open, but it will be open from five till six before Youth Club starts. So that's Thursdays from five till six. Next Sunday is the big day, the day that Mike and I have been training for since <laughs> April. Um, we'll be down in Newcastle, hopefully not in this kind of weather, um, running 13 and a bit miles. Um, uh, Bill, Janice, Linda and May are going to share in worship with you and for those of you um, on the live stream, there won't be a live stream next week but there will be a recorded service. So that there will be a service that's accessible if you can't make it into the building. And perhaps you might see something of us before we start running but more, well, keep that under my hat. Anyway. The following week, Saturday the 17th and the 18th of September, is our gift weekend. On the Saturday, um, there'll be refreshments available in the large hall. There'll also be a cake and candy stall and I think a little bit of a tombola. Um, so please come along and enjoy some fellowship. And then on the Sunday, um, we will give thanks for the gift day. And at the end of the service, there will be an informal communion. As you leave today, if you would like to do so, I invite you to take one of these cards. Um, and at the gift weekend, but really it doesn't have to be the gift weekend, it could be any Sunday that suits you, I invite you to speak to a friend or a neighbour, perhaps somebody who was a, a regular at the church but since Covid has felt a little bit anxious about coming back, uh, and to take one to them and say, I'm inviting you to come along with me and just bring them along. So I'll have these at the door on the way out. And then on Sunday the 25th of September, it's harvest. <laughs> it's a busy month this month um, and we will be collecting items for our food bank, which I suspect are going to be in high demand this year. I think that might be it. Nobody's waving at me. So I think I, think I might have got everything there. Um, we stand to sing our final hymn today, number 402 in the purple hymn books. Words will be on the screen. For take up your cross, the Saviour said. <coughs>
the joy of knowing that God is with us. Go ready to serve, knowing that God is with us. Go ready to give, knowing that God is with us in all that we do and all that we are. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you now and forevermore. an awful lot better. But have a good week, everyone.